that was very easily casual, normally done. And there was a retention price scheme, I don't want to get you into that problem, which allowed this kind of fund transfers to be possible. We, at our own instance, decided to go out, out of this. And this was a very tax efficient system. Because if I take out money on account of retention price scheme from the profit making companies, it used to be considered as a tax deductible expenditure. And it was a taxable income in the hands of the loss making companies. These companies, even after getting those monies, were in losses, therefore this was never taxed. And that was getting a tax relief. So it was a fantastic tax efficient arrangement, everybody was happy. But what was happening is, good money was wasted on bad purposes. Good money generated by profit making <coughs> operations and projects, should be invested in the same company for another development of other projects. Instead of doing that, it was being wasted for paying salaries or overtimes or whatever it is, bonuses, irrespective of no profits, no <laughs> huge losses, keep on paying money. So that practice had to be stopped. And in 1996, we sort of decided to corporatize financial flows between subsidiaries and holding company. We decided that Coal India is the holding company, fine. But it cannot access the surpluses of profit making companies other than by way of a transparently laid down dividend policy. This was a policy that was enunciated. So naturally that gave much lesser access to the resources generated by profit making companies than it was earlier. Out of the resources that comes through this dividend policy, first charge is to meet the debt service obligations of the government, that <coughs> the dividend payments to government from preference equity was there, so that dividend had to be paid, and the little money that was left was utilized to provide structured support to the loss paying companies. And that structured support was not for operations, no support for salaries. Support was only to maintain the productive capacity. If they don't have money, to invest in replacement of old out equipment, then the capacity dwindles, then the company will be in a bad shape, and therefore to prevent that, certain amount of monetary support, only to meet the replacement requirement was provided. But there was a rider there. And the rider was, that unless the companies achieved certain targets of physical and financial performance, production target or financial target, this support will not be given. So it came with a rider. We called it a firewall. <coughs> I, I acknowledge that I had an instrumental role to create that firewall in the company. And unfortunately, two of my companies, Eastern Coalfish and Bharat Cooking Coal, who were perennially loss making, were on the wrong side of the firewall. So, they had to face it. Now, <coughs> anyway, the company started making profits as a whole. The company went into more than 1,000 crore profits in 96-97. It became profit making from 91-92 itself. But that those profits were below 1,000 crores. 167 was the first year's profits. 91, 92, <coughs> 92, 92, 91, like that it was moving. 1137 crores was a profit in 96, 97. So we were all very happy, say, it has crossed 1,000 crores. But those two companies were big problems. They continued to remain problems. <coughs> As luck would have it, unfortunately, in 2003, I joined as a CMD of BCCL, so I was put on the wrong side of the firewall. And by that time, BCCL from 98-99 were missing the targets of physical and financial performance and therefore were not entitled to the support from Coal India. So the support was gone. As a result, when I joined BCCL in 2003, I found that the company had lost production by 6 million tons in the preceding 5 years, was into 600 crores annual loss, loss in last 5 years more than 3,800 crores, out of which 1800 crores are cash losses, and annually it was incurring three to 400 crores of cash losses. Those became huge accumulated liabilities. They had liabilities like 400 crores to PF authorities, liabilities of 250 crores to the Central Industrial Security Force. 250 crores represented actually 10 years of defaulted payment because the annual payment, the monthly payment was only 2 crores. So 2 crores, 125 months, 10 years. 10 years lag in payment to CISF and Ministry of Home Affairs is issuing letters that unless the payment is made by certain surgery that we are going to withdraw the CISF and there was 3000 CISF people. If they are withdrawn, it's in any case a mafia dominated area, so the mafias will become decoys and it's a horrible situation, completely insecure situation. So we had all kinds of problems. There we conceived and ultimately implemented a revival plan without any direct support from the uh, from Coal India, excepting by way of a loans which were repaid in time. 
We did take loans, which were repaid in time. We implemented certain policies. And as a <coughs> result of those policies, ultimately, <coughs> we could come out of the woods. And in 2006, BCCL first made a profit of 202 crores. Thereafter, it has been consistently making profits. Last year, it has ended with a profit of more than 1,000 crores. So it's completely a, a, a revived, turned around company. Now, what actually were the steps that were taken? I don't want to describe all the steps, but some of the steps. First of all, the issue was transparency. It was necessary to point out what is the reason of such a huge problem and how to come out of the problem. The first problem that we noticed was the company at some point of time, it had 100,000 employees. So at some point of time in the month, it wanted to pay off the net salary. So that the employees are, you know, quiet. But with highly irregular. The, the salary which is supposed to be they, <clears throat> paid on the first, were paid on the 28th or 29th or 30th or 25th, some other, some day of the month. Somehow it was paid. The employee's contribution to Provident Fund, leave aside the employer's contribution. Even the employee's contribution used to be a source of working capital for the company. It used to be used to meet other expenses. And they were defaults. <coughs> But because, you know, that is not something which is visible. So we can use it like that. And for suppliers of production holding and safety items, the reason why the production was falling like a stone, they were paid with a lag of 22 months, which means you supply today and then disappear, come after 22 months for the payment. The company was depending basically on benevolent suppliers, people who supply without getting paid. And such benevolent suppliers were becoming... <coughs> quite uh, absent in the whole scene. And therefore there were no supplies, production was falling. What it was necessary was to tell the trade union leaders, all the workmen, representatives, in a common forum, that this can't continue. So that we did. In January 2004, I convened a meeting of the trade union leaders, and there I clearly said that, you see, this is the kind of cash flow that was happening. Another one million ton of drop will ensure that you don't pay 12 net salaries in a year. You start paying 10 net salaries. There will be, a, there will be default on that. Next year it will be 8. And when that kind of a situation happens, you and us will not be on both sides of the table. All of us will be on this side. Trade union leaders and management. On that side will be 1 lakh people. And to face them. So better, let's understand the issues and let's understand the solutions. The solution is that from today, the suppliers of production, holding and safety items has to be given the topmost priority. Then only we can expect supplies, then only we can expect production not to fall. So salaries, the priority will shift from number one to number three. So actually the trade union leaders, and saying something like that in Dhanbad is not easy. Trade union leaders are adhast. What is this fellow talking? So, the only thing is, I had something in my sleep. So, somebody asked you, what is going to be number two priority? One among them said that, how I push contractor ka payment? You know, the usual stuff. Then I retorted by saying, this will be the provident fund payments for the previous month. Unless you pay the provident fund dues, both employers and employees contribution to the PF authorities for the previous month, this month's salary will not be released. Let the workers face the problem today, but let them secure their future. There was something they said, Chaliye, Koshish Kariye. You know, <laughs> communication helps. And I tell you, we created a system where the suppliers were told that if the, one of the directors, technical, they certify a particular item to be production holding or safety item, please come and collect your money next day. Which was better than what my profit making subsidies are paying. Profit making subsidies are paying in one month. And suppliers were clearly told that for the areas, please freeze it for the time being. Let's recover, we'll see to it. But today's supplies, you get paid better than what your profit making companies are paying. Come and collect money tomorrow. That ensured supplies. So as a result, those were some of the beginning steps. Thereafter, there were so many other steps. One more step I have to describe because that is the subject matter of this conference. So that is basically, you know, 25% of the coal was sold to people who had been granted linkage long back. This linkage is a very interesting thing. Right in the beginning, in the late 70s and early 80s, 
we had we have an, one organization called CMPDI. They came out with a solid smokeless fuel technology, a technology which allowed coal to be converted to solid smokeless fuel. If you remember earlier, till early 70s, raw coal was used in kitchens, domestic kitchens. But then that was creating a lot of mess, dhua and all that. So people wanted, there was a popular demand of solid smokeless fuel. So a technology was developed by CMPDI. And whosoever wanted to set up a plant with that technology, were given a linkage of 5,000 tons a month. That's quite usual. And there were hundreds of such people. They came out. Unfortunately, the linkage system didn't have a review built into it. You know, there were initial days, so there was a mistake made.